John Gillespie McGee was born to Anglican missionaries in Shanghai, China on June 9, 1922. His father was an American Episcopal priest and his British mother was a member of the Church Missionary Society. McGee was educated primarily in England, but because of the outbreak of World War II, he finished at a boarding school in Connecticut in 1940. Eager to support the war effort, McGee joined the Royal Canadian Air Force. He learned to fly, earned his wings, and was promoted to the rank of pilot officer. McGee was sent to the UK, where he trained in the Supermarine Spitfire. He was assigned to a Canadian fighter squadron. In November 1941, he flew a combat mission as a bomber escort over France, surviving an encounter with a German Luftwaffe in which the other three planes in his section were shot down. He also flew a handful of convoy patrols, those without incident. On December 11, 1941, McGee was killed during a training exercise. His Spitfire collided midair with a twin-engine airspeed Oxford trainer that just happened to be passing through his airspace. John McGee was 19 years old and was only in the 10th week of active service. Now, if this were all to this story, John McGee would likely be completely unknown, not even a footnote in the history of the European theater of the war. But there is more. John McGee, in September 1941, included a poem entitled High Flight with a letter to his parents. Oh, I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and enjoyed the tumbled mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of, wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the sap-shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious, burning blue, I've topped the wind-swept heights with easy grace, where never lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent lifting mind, I've trod the high untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand, and touched the face of God. Now, if this sounds familiar, it should. Through the efforts of McGee's father, High Flight was reprinted in publications of St. John's Episcopal Church in Washington, D.C. It attracted the attention of the Library of Congress and was included in an exhibition of poems in early 1942. High Flight was recited by actress Merle Oberon at every stop of the War Bonds Tour in 1942. The phrases slip the surly bonds of earth and touch the face of God were many years later included by speechwriter Peggy Noonan in President Ronald Reagan's address to the nation following the Space Shuttle Challenger accident in January 1986. The poem is inscribed in full on one of the many Challenger memorials and it is prominently featured in American and Canadian aviation museums all across North America. At the time he wrote it, High Flight was nothing more than the poetic musings of the 19-year-old John McGee, put on paper only hours after he had flown his Spitfire to the height of 33,000 feet. It was a letter to his parents, expressing the joy of flight and marveling at his own achievement. He had no idea that those words would live on beyond his death, inspiring aviators, astronauts, and even the words of an American president. That is the rest of the story of John McGee. <clears throat> and the inspiration for our next piece, James Kernow's Were Never Lark or Evil Flew, conducted by Scotty Jones. <laughs> 